Let's play a game. I'm thinking we need to have a volunteer like always. So let's pick on the first column of tables. That's the one column closest to the door. And let's go one, two, three, fourth seat back. You and your partner, come on up. If nobody happens to be in that table, let's pick on the table in front of them. Come on up to the front. All right. Now, while I want the rest of you to stand up, Weir says, stand up. Yeah, that means you too. Stand up. Everybody up. Okay, what I want the volunteers in the front to do is I want you to look at all the students. I want you to look at what they're wearing, how their hair is shaped, whether they're tall or short, black or blue, not talking about skin color for you guys who think I'm racist. Um, I want the two up front without telling the class to categorize and put the entire class in groups based on something. Now, a couple rules. You may not use ugly as a category. You may not use fat as a category or skinny. Anything that might offend somebody. So I'm going to give them a few minutes to do that. So pause the video here. Okay. Next. The same group of people. Without mentioning how you did it the first time. I want you to now split each group doing something differently picking on some other characteristic that they might have let's give them a couple more minutes to split these groups up so pause the video here let's pick on the third column that's the one over by the blue wall blue and white wall trophy wall what I want you to do is decide what to what was the first category in which all of the students were split. Pause the video here. Now I want you to go to each group and tell me what was the second category in which they were split. Pause the video here. Everybody back to your desk now. Everybody back to your desk. Let's do this one more time. Now that you guys get the game, I want the next volunteer to be the first table of column three. The first table of column three to come on up. This time I want you guys to do it as well but now that you know the rules again once you're done and remember no negatives we don't want to be offended once you're done I want a volunteer from column two third table back the middle column third table back to go through and figure out what the first category and second categories were picked pause the video here See, isn't science a blast? Who knew you could have fun in science class? Okay, everybody have a seat. Let's get on to the lecture. Okay, so what I have here is a bunch of different minerals. Some of them are similar, some are completely funky. But one of the things that we need to do is be able to classify them and so what you could do is you could say, you know what, all black minerals, they must be the same. So you can put all the dark minerals in one area. You can say, you know what, I love these sparkly purple things, so let's put them in another area. Ooh, this one's just kind of funky on its own. 
So I don't know, I'll put it in a third category. And let's just grab all these white ones. Oh, there's another one with a little purple. But how do I know if the purple doesn't match more of these white things, okay? So, but it's got purple, so I'm gonna put it over there. I'm gonna grab these, they kinda of all look white. So just grab all these together, all white minerals. Put them right there. Oh, there's one that's white, so let's put it there. Oh, here's another black one, some dark colored ones. I've got a couple green minerals here, so let's put those here. Oh, there's another white one. How about all these flat ones? Maybe the flat ones should go together. And oh, there's another black one. Oh, there's a, I don't even know what that is. Let's put it on its own. Well, it's kind of dark, so we'll put it there. Oh, we got some pretty pinks, so let's put some pinks together. Oh, I've got a little flowered one. So let's put the flowered one off to the side somewhere. There's a semi-green one, another semi-green one. So my point in saying this is that that is a horrible way to classify minerals. So scientists have come up with more than just colors to identify minerals. And that's what we want to explore in this chapter, is to make sure you understand how geologists will go about figuring out what type of minerals we have without the pretty numbered labels. We talked about how using color is the worst way to identify a mineral. But let's go through a few of the ways. Of course you can use color. Colors can help you. Sulfur looks yellow. Almost always. I can't imagine any other color for sulfur. Not all yellow minerals are sulfur. So you can look at the appearance, the color. And as you can see from this uh, picture here, all of those pictures are pictures of quartz. And you can see I've got white, green, red, and brown. So again, just the color is just a horrible way of doing things. The next test you can use is called the luster test. First of all, what is luster? Luster is how the light is reflected from a mineral surface. Okay, It's going to either be metallic or non-metallic. Sometimes people may, might call it sub-metallic. Metallic minerals shine like gold, copper, silver, and iron. If it does not look like gold, copper, silver, or iron, it is a non-metallic mineral. Non-metallics then look dull. They look maybe like a pearl. Uh, they might look silky. Your whites are going to be non-metallic. Yellows, browns, and blues are non-metallic. Anything that doesn't look like it's metal is probably a non-metallic mineral. In fact, if in doubt, when you're trying to classify minerals, use non-metallic minerals. Okay, or guess that it's non-metallic minerals. Pull out a blank line piece of paper. Put your name on it. Number it... 1 to 32, you'll now each receive a mineral. Look at each mineral. Ask yourself, does it look like gold, copper, silver, or iron? If it does, you're going to put metallic next to the number of that mineral. Your numbers will come out of order, so just make sure that if you see number 24, you actually put the answer on number 24 on your line piece of paper. Do not scratch those numbers off, okay? Otherwise, it'll confuse everybody. After classifying the mineral, pass it to the next person. What you're going to do is you're going to create a loop for the class. For example, the first column of tables will pass their mineral forward. Once it gets to the front, the front table will pass it to the table of the middle columns. The middle column, you guys always pass your minerals back, except for the very back table. The back table will pass it to the third column over by the blue wall. And then the third column, you guys will pass your mineral forward. And you'll just keep this loop. When you're done classifying whether it's metallic or non-metallic, just pass it on. Wait until the next person gives you the mineral. 
and then you just keep going. I'm hoping you can get through all 32 minerals, but I'll be satisfied if you go until the bell rings. Okay, it shouldn't take 32 minutes to do this. You don't need a minute on it. Ask yourself, does it look like gold, copper, silver? If it does, it's metallic. If it does not, then it is non-metallic. Don't forget, iron-looking minerals are also metallic mineral, and those are actually some of the toughest ones to identify. P.S. If a mineral looks shiny, that does not mean it looks like gold, copper, silver, or iron. Shiny minerals are not metallic simply because they're shiny. Please don't forget that. I get a lot of kids every year getting that classification wrong simply because it shines. If it's going to be a metallic mineral, it needs to shine like gold, copper, silver, or iron.